Hey everyone, Tim with the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor is Junior Mount, and as always, on behalf of Pastor, myself, and the church and the congregation, we'd like to give you an open invitation to come out and be with us and play playing here we go here we go <laughs> start tripping over my speech again here um, we are praying for this year to be blessed I know there's a lot of people that you that's probably using the slogan because I don't heard it I've heard think I've heard several people and I, I probably won't use it much but it's you know uh, but but it's true you know we won't we won't this year if the Lord doesn't come back this year, which, hey, hey, if, if, if he does, oh my goodness, if, we, if, if we're all called out of here, to, but I believe there's so much, there's still some things that has to happen prophetically before we go anywhere, okay? Uh, a lot of people don't believe that. A lot of people have that doctrine of imminency saying, you know, that the Lord can come at any time, you know, but that's the people that are pre-trib, rapture-relieving Christians believe that at whatever time he'll come pull us out of here most of the time it's right before they believe any trouble is going to happen people troubles already happen tribulation is already coming to our brothers and sisters worldwide okay now don't you believe they ask them about whether they whether they believe in a pre-tribulation pre uh rapture <laughs> uh because they're they're they are getting crucified, their throats cut, bullets in the back of their head, you name it, they're getting it. Now I'm not, on here, I didn't come on here to start to slam any one stance, someone's biblical stance, that just, I, it just, it, it, it amazes me, it's a lot of people look at this, I'll say this, we look at this through American eyes, so what do you mean? Now I'm not down in America, we're Americans, I love that I was born in this country, and have the freedoms that we do, and, and, and God's blessings as He's blessed. Um, but I believe uh, really sometimes that we uh, we have our American we have our own American Christianity, and that's not against any denomination like American Christian Church or any kind of of the same name. That's not something I'm just saying a generalization. We have a an Americanized Christianity that believes that when we start feeling a little bit of the fire, a little bit of the pain, of the tribulation, of the trials that are to come, that we're just going to be taken out of here, just like that. We don't have to worry about it. God's Word doesn't really bear that out. The trials and tribulations are going to come to the, the people of God, to the church of God. That goes beyond denominational lines and 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 so, and so on. It's going to come to all those that believe. <laughs> Plus, of course, at one point, you know, you're going to be deceived. So at one point, you drop yourself out of God's protective hand because you believe, well, you know, if He was coming, He would have came by now the way it is. So you know, I'm, I just don't believe this anymore, so I'm not going to worry about it, and I don't worry about church anymore, and I'm just going to live and have a good time, and enjoy my life, because there's probably nothing that, after uh, this anyway, and we're just going to go, uh, go, you know, just going to be, be buried, and that's going to be it, and you know, so I'm just going to, might as well just enjoy my life, you know. I hate that some people have gotten that way, some people, but some people have. Some people have got weary, weary in their well doing as God's word tells us and have went back to their own pernicious ways to their own fleshly ways uh, so you see some people would say that say well see they were never saved to begin with now wait a minute now wait a minute yeah you can't be sure yeah you, you you set yourself up as judge once you said that saying well they were never saved anyway you don't know that now a lot of you people that are of a certain walk in this would say that as an excuse because it excuses other parts of your belief system. You can't do that. You've got to take God's word and everything as a whole. You can't just take and cut sections out of it that you won't 
No, I'm talking about I'm, I'm not talking about just to one that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. I'm not talking about all of us, all of us, uh, everyone that that that, that says they are a Christian and that walk a Christian life, that are Christ's life. This is for you. I'm talking about. We can't take the sections out of God's Word and just use the ones we think. Oh, those are okay. We'll use that that those set of rules and live by those. <laughs> no, you've got to live by the entire thing. We can live by the Old Testament. That's the old law, right? I know we're not under the law. There's a there's a the, the, the movement now called the uh, what was it the uh, Hebraic as in Hebrew Hebraic roots movement that believes that you know that you uh, you know God never said that you stop take or that you stopped uh, uh, supposed to stop doing the uh, um my goodness what I'm talking about the uh, the the feast days and stuff like that and celebrating those. Um, we're under grace, people. <laughs> I mean, if you if if you feel that you personally want to keep in the Mosaic Law the feast days and you know the days of atonement and you know the rest of them, then okay, that's fine. You know, go ahead. But let me tell you something. You don't need to be the, I believe that that's 50% what's saving me, and I believe grace is the other 50% of what's saving me. No, it's grace 100%. That's what, you know, God's, that's why the Lord Jesus came, okay? And I, <laughs> I know, you guys, my goodness, he's coming on here and he's just slamming everybody. No, I'm just bringing forth what I feel like the Lord had me to bring forth. I want to bring forth. I don't want to pull any punches. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings on purpose. But people, we we have got we got to get our nose, as the old saying goes, the nose to the grindstone. We've got it. You know, time is is running out. I just kind of laid back earlier, thinking just about the time that's wasted, that's been wasted. And was weeping about it, thinking about it, and the, you know the things that we would have, should have, could have done, but we didn't. Things that we would have, could have, should have said, and we didn't say it. You know, we lost people, lost family, the past year, the past year before, and such. And I, and I, I know a lot of people have. I know a lot of you out there have family and friends, you know, uh, you know, uh, brothers and sisters, and, and you know, and parents and uh, sons and daughters, and uh, and you want them to see the the light of the gospel. Well, first you got to make sure that that light of the gospel is turned on inside of you, and that's what you're showing and radiating out. If you're not showing it, if you're not living it before someone else in truth. And spearing in the truth, then why do they want any part of that? I know I would. I, I would say probably most of what anybody else would say is saying. And believe me, I've seen some witness some that that said that that, that claimed it. Said, "Oh yeah, uh, of course." A little bit of a twist that sometimes you ask them about that, and they say uh, they don't. They don't say yes. I'm a Christian. I'm Christ like I'm Christ like you know I'm, I'm they say oh I go to such and such church. One gentleman I asked this has been a few years ago, where I used to work. I heard him talking about he was playing the guitar or the bass guitar in the uh, in a, a church that him and his wife and you know, children were going to. And I tried I thought oh well this guy I, I you know I had no idea that he <laughs> even darkened the doors of the church. But he set me pretty set me straight pretty quick. I mean, he wasn't mean or anything, but he just kind of cut me off. I said, "Oh, I know. Didn't know you went to what church you went to." And he gave an A, and he immediately after giving an A, he said, "I, I did, no, I just got to go with my wife and my kid, and I because I play an instrument up when everybody's singing. That's that's why I go. No other reason." I said, "Well, okay, well, yeah, well, anyway, I just." One just, you know, I heard you say it, so that's why I mentioned it. Yeah, that's all I do. Pitiful. Same, very same office was one of the gentlemen too that uh, <laughs> that come up and basically said that uh, 
and I don't even know, I don't even know how the conversation got started. I, I was I I was off. Most of the time I was off doing my own thing, even though I was there in a room full of people and we were doing tech support by the phone. And we had different shifts. Some we weren't there every day. Something we shifted through to different places, and it happened to me there there that day. Guy, I guess we were leaving out, and as I was leaving out, you know, I was like thankful. Thank you, Lord, give get me through another day in this place and get me out of here. And on the way out, the guy said, "Well," and I mentioned something about somebody said the fear of God, and the guy's like, "Well, that's my that guess that's my problem because I don't have a fear of God." Really? Okay. And I, that I, that that kind of stunt me for a minute. I slowed down and just looked, and he was just sitting there, just all proud, and you know, chest chest stuck out, and I, and, I, I, and you know, I just being being so ready to get out of there at the time. I was, you know, what I, that was a missed opportunity, as I talked about for me, because I should have said something. Now, I did one time to someone in there. Actually, it was a. It was a it, I, you could call him a, a a friend, I guess. You know, an acquaintance at the time, or but you know, it's still kind of a friend. Um, and if, and if, I, if we're around him was around him at a wedding here recently, and one of our friends that we worked with and everything saw him and you know embraced him as a friend, you know, and uh, everything. But uh, I actually corrected him one day. He said something that was kind of offensive to me as being a Christian, and I, and I actually said it out loud, and I, and I sort of embarrassed him. I should have, I should have asked him if, hey, let's turn, let's turn our phones off for a minute here, and let's slip outside the door. I got to talk to you. Probably should have done it that way, but uh, it, uh, that was one of those days that it, it struck me, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna make an example here. <laughs> and I and I did and, I, and he apologized and I think I embarrassed him in front of a lot of people not recommending that anyone do that okay but that was just I'm just I'm just showing, giving you some of my experiences that I went through that when I should have said something and sometimes when I actually said something and should have said it a different way in a different manner and that was probably one of those that I should have said in a different way but the point was made other people in the room heard it they knew it they knew from here on out afterwards and most of the time when i come in there they just would would you know say hey and that was that was about it uh, but just so much ungodliness you know uh, in your workplace and you know it uh just out in the world in general but yeah a lot of times it is it, it's it's in your workplace and that uh where i was <laughs> where i was working uh, at, at at a at a university, much much sin, much evil works, much you know, uh, you name it, and you know that uh, it was there. <laughs> you can say that. Of course, you can say it probably about a lot of universities around. You know, if you if you want to label them like a, as they call them a party university. And I can attest to that, you know, right at the end of semester, you know, dumpsters full of uh, alcohol and beer bottles and you know, beer cans and uh, I, I li literally BFI dumpsters, long dumpsters, full, full, falling over, full. It amazed me. I just stood there and I just blinked and looked. And I said, am I seeing all that right? Is that all alcohol? I got close and looked and every bit of it. People. That that is our that that the generation that was going through school at that time. Now, what's it like now? Same, worse, worse. I guess. Well, brother, we have a conservative that's in the White House that's going to get in the White House. Well, if he makes it, <laughs> you never know. Something could happen, uh, and I'm going to say what could happen but something could happen you just you never know there's a lot of people in this country that are upset and dissatisfied at this at this point but I, am i glad that we have somebody that's not of certain beliefs well yes you know and i'm not gonna get into the politics i'm just gonna say this we'll see what happens but let's finish off with that with the with that with this statement here 
my faith and your faith should not be in a man at all. We don't want to be like Israel did. And we already actually are to a certain extent at one point. You know, we said, God, we don't want to be ruled by you anymore. We want to be ruled by man. Israel said, you know, give us a king as these other nations, as these other pagan and heathen nations have, and let him rule over us because we don't want to be ruled by God anymore. We don't want to be under a theocracy or to be ruled by God and his prophets show us what we want to do. We want to be like these other nations, has kings and we'll make these all, and, the, and we can do something. Like that's going to excuse them for the sin that they do. Well, my king said we could do this. Well, my king Jesus said that you shouldn't do this. And my king Jesus outweighs your king so-and-so here on this earth. You know, <laughs> Well, they'd look at it. Well, should we, it would be great to go under another the, a theocracy. It'll never happen. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but God, he is, is my pastor. Well, I put it, he feels like the Lord is just waiting, just over. You know, he he says it. He says it this way: looking over the balconies of heaven, looking down upon us, ready to come get his church, and. Uh, You know, the point is, <laughs> let's get the conclusion of the whole matter here. We need to be ready to go at any moment. Because, for one thing, most importantly, you may not make it to see the end or the, the or you want to call it the rapture if you believe in that, the second coming, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever you are, whatever uh, belief you are, you know, pre trib, pre or mid-trib or post-trib, you know, everything. And as I've said, you know, I know we're not we're not going to see the wrath of God. I understand that. But I believe as a church we're going to see if if we're still alive at the time, if it's not beyond our time, because there's no guarantee it's going to be right away. You know, we're on God's timetable, his prophetic timetable. Uh, we see the things that are talking about that are coming in the end days. It's happening. He said, we'd know these, you know, by, you know, by the seasons and everything. He said, I have no need to write to you. You know. So anyway, go ahead and be turning with me to the book of First Peter. Uh, chapter 1, and we'll probably start at verse 16. Uh, so, yeah, it, uh, you may not make it to see any of this. You may uh, be dead of something beforehand. Some of you, you know, how many, you know, how many, how many people in the, on the planet have died this very day, or not on the, you know, the other side, in the areas that are nighttime. How many, you know, how many had this very day, or you know, yesterday? How many, how many people have died for whatever reason? You know, old age, uh, cancer, huge one. Huge cancer, you know, o overdose, you know, other other uh, diseases, you know, accidents. You know, you're not guaranteed, not guaranteed at all, to have another day set before you. So we should, <clears throat> excuse me, should consider each and every day blessing. And try to use that in some manner to try to bring glory to God. To try to do something for the Lord to help somebody. Uh, if that's calling somebody to check on them, sending a text to somebody, I don't recommend really. It's kind of, if you're checking on somebody in, as a, like an official from the church, like, you know, like the pastor or a pastor's wife, deacon, they want some, you know, some people's kind of rules are a little bit different, you know. Some people are kind of okay with doing the text thing, others aren't. So uh, you got to use your judgment on that. But you know, you can't, you know, by text, hey, missed you service. Hope you're feeling okay. You know, uh, lift you up in prayer, or you can call and do the same thing. Try to get a hold of them, email or something like that. So many ways to get a hold of people, uh, all the way to going to visit somebody, visit somebody in the hospital. Um, Visit uh, somebody at their home. 
should they, you know, should they let you in, you know? No, we have people, especially at our church, that have family members that want that they uh, they want to see come to Christ and they want to see come back to Christ. See, a lot of people, if stuff doesn't go their way, then immediately they're going to get mad, stomp their feet, and throw a tantrum and blame God. And so, well, I'll just stop going to church and I'll just stop serving God. Well, that's your decision. You are a free moral agent, but you know what? That's the wrong decision. But no people to do that. Saying, so, Lord, I, this is not working out, or this, uh, you know, I wanted to do this, and I, I put my, I, you know, I, I, I threw myself out there in faith and was doing this and everything. Well, maybe it's something that's not going to happen five minutes after you pray a prayer for it to happen. There's stuff that may have to happen for stuff to, or other things to happen. You know, there's just a certain order if it's a cascading that goes on, you know, so something happens, it opens up and more and more and more and more stuff happens. God doesn't want to see you have anything bad or anything bad happen to you. He don't so don't so why blame him? It's the enemy that you should blame. But also too, you have to be attentive to what the Lord wants you to do. There's something that you may want to do or think that you need to do. And it may not be God's will. You may be reading it all wrong. You uh, you may be thinking he's saying one thing, or but you know he's actually saying something else. But you're basically kind of ignoring that one. Lord, he's saying no. I don't think you should go this way. Uh, this this way is not the correct way that I want you to go, and it's going to end up in failure and. Uh, just wait, uh, wait and abide until this opens up to do this. Well, some people can't do it. Some people now want now, want now, want now. Uh, excuse me, I want uh, hamburger, fries, and a coat. Drive a few feet. When thank you, pull it out of the window and get it, and they've got they're taken off. That's the culture. That's what we want God to be nowadays. We want Him to be the drive-through God. Ask for it, and you know, two minutes, two or three minutes later. <laughs> Somebody's actually doing more than that. Uh, you, you've, you've got what you've asked for and prayed for. It don't happen like that a lot of times. Things have to happen. And you have to understand God puts certain things into play. You know, do you expect him to set the world on end for you, for, just, for, for something, you know, that you prayed for? Some people would say, yeah. What makes you so special? Yeah, I know if you're saved and you're one of God's children, hey, I understand. I, I totally agree with you. But certain things that are reserved for certain things. Now, so the apostles, you know, talked about when they come into the town areas, I believe Paul was one of them. They said they set the world on end or to, to that, that same phraseology. I can't remember. I may have paraphrasing. Uh, the, you know, this is the hope to set the whole town on end, set the world on end, you know. Uh, but that's the preaching of gospel that's not saying Lord I want this so do this so at any rate I'm you know I, I promise I'm not I promise I'm not fussing at people but I'm, I want people to be realistic when it comes to their service for God sure he can move he can move mountains no doubt about that if we have the faith he can move it but a lot of times, if it doesn't happen immediately, where's your faith? All that faith that you said, oh, I know he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Then the very uh, one day into it, he doesn't do it. Well, I'm just giving up. He's not going to do it. He's just, uh, he's just, uh, just going to leave me hanging out here. So I guess I'll just give up. And I tell you what, I, I just won't go back to church. And I just won't, I just won't do this anymore. I won't, you know, uh, serve God anymore. Well, like I said, you're a free moral agent. You do what you want to. God gave us a choice. He didn't want us to be mindless automatons, meaning, you know, just, you know, just doing like a robot, just, oh, I'm supposed to do this and I do this. No. He gave us free moral course to choose or to not choose him. As for, as for me, I choose him. As for me, as my, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's what I say for me. So, 
What do you say? Think about it. And as we get into God's Word, we're thinking about Because we're, oh, we're going to get hit kind of with a whole hard punch here in the very first verse. Verse 16 it says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Oh my goodness, brother. Why did you put it? very first verse after all that and you're going to smack it across the face no I'm not smacking you across the face God's word it, but that it is God's word you're going to be ye holy for I'm holy it's part of that as I've said many times before all this is in here for a reason if he didn't want it in here and didn't want us to do it then he wouldn't have put it in his book and I'm pointing at the online bible by the way he wouldn't have put it in his word if he did not want us to try. Strive for the perfecting of the saints. He's put that in there. I know. Here we go again. I'm not. I'm not making an excuse, but I'm. This is. This is the reason why I say. I know the spirit in us is the only thing that's truly perfect about this. But if you have that spirit of Christ in you, if you have if the Holy Ghost dwells in you, then it's going to bring forth fruit good fruit, good works. You're going to strive for that perfection, to walk with God, to try to be as holy as you possibly can. And therein, a lot of people preach, well, you can't be holy at all, so there's no point in even trying. Well, most of those, if you put up a sinner and this and a person that says that, that says a Christian, but let anything go, most of the time you can't tell the difference. You know, you, you can overlay the two and, you know, basically be the same thing one just says yeah I'm a sinner and I do what I want to and the other one says yeah I'm a Christian and I do what I want to remember what we talked about earlier <laughs> you can't do that God's word doesn't <clears throat> excuse me excuse me, my voice is messed up God's word it does not bear any of that out for you to act like that and do that we are supposed to be a, a peculiar people, a you know a, 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 the priesthood of God here on earth. Being peculiar means different than the average person. That's what a lot of persons see. Is they may not have a or the, okay, they may have a Bible that you know mom and dad gave them, and it's maybe up in the closet somewhere. You don't even know. Uh, some people I know that they get these big white and I, we've got one ourselves. It's, it's not out display just because we have uh, <laughs> cats and, uh, you know, uh, any of you cat owners out there understand what I'm talking about when I say you got to keep a lot of stuff up and out of the way if you got those uh, uh, little, little boogers running around. Uh, but a lot of people have these large white family Bibles, as they call them. Uh, I mentioned one one year I had one of those because you know you write stuff in it family and marriage and all, all that stuff you know so wife one of, the, one of the items she got me for Christmas a lot of people have those out on their coffee table just as you know as a, a, a decoration it's covered in well if, if a person cleans <laughs> and, it's, and it's not most of them is covered in dust but the main thought of being a lot of people have their Bibles covered in dust. Hey, look, I don't study as much as I should. I'll be the I'll be honest and first and up front in saying that. Now, how many of you out there can be honest the same way, saying, "No, oh, yeah, I, I can, I can certainly do some more studying." Now, there's a different ways of doing that. You can do you can get online. You can get an actual copy of the Bible or it. You can listen to preaching and teaching. Let me tell you something. If YouTube has one good use, uh, it is a good medium, good way for people to get their ministry out there. And uh, use it to, to bring it uh, you know, to the, the web for people to see. Yours truly here. That's what I, that's what I do, you know. And uh, you put it out there, you say, Lord, you bless it, you let it go, you send it forth to the people that who you want it to be sent forth to, and work 
and whosoever's lives that you want to work. Uh, you got to be like discovering more and more that you know there's some you look at, but the enemy wants to say, "Well, look, you know, you got you got this many subscribers. These other people have got this many subscribers, and it's you know it's just huge gap, and you know like that." Well. <laughs> The enemy's going to do anything to you to try to discourage you. So that's one good way that the internet can be used, as opposed to a lot of the, the bad, bad, bad ways the internet has been used and is being used. But for as long as we're able to do this, and I'm able to do this, and the Lord says to do this, then that's what we're going to do. Because why? Because there's a need for it. There's a work. There's another opening. This is the way, one of the ways, even more so than the ancients ever saw about getting the gospel across the world. You know, talk about missionary work, you know, people going to places and everything up to a point, and people are still doing that. Everything. But there are, there's also censorship in some countries too that they can't do that. So that's where, you know, Sometimes the people, missionaries go and have underground churches and praise the Lord for them. But they're doing something that's dangerous. But, as I said, internet is one way that, we, that we're getting the gospel preached among and published among all nations. And what did the Lord say? He said after the gospel was preached and was published amongst all nations, then the end, then the end will come. So just how close are we? <laughs> internet but I is can be worldwide you can have in the, in the middle of the jungle you can have uh, uh, you know take out your laptop if you're out there doing whatever what and you if you have a satellite link satellite internet you can get on the internet so I mean it's out there I'm gonna get off on that but uh, <laughs> Lord, Lord knows but you know it's talking about being holy for I'm holy does he expect you to be as sinless and spotless and as as the Son of God? Technically, in a way. What? Well, because the Spirit of God dwells in us. If we have accepted the Lord Jesus, we've taken on his light, his death, his likeness. We're buried in death and resurrection, you know, baptized and brought up as a sign of faith, as a sign that the old man is dead and the new man is, has arisen. And and, and, there, and you know in that in the type of resurrection type scenario, so we're to walk in that newness of life, and part of that newness is what it's talking about here. You know, you don't go to the same places you used to go to. You don't. Your speech is not the same as it used to be. Uh, uh, thank, all the stuff that you used to do, you no longer do, and you're no longer that person. That's what I'm talking about. So, can't leave it right there, can we? Because people will say, well, you know, he's just one of those, uh, what was holier than thou, uh, Bible thumpers, and uh, this and that, and that's, you know, that's what he says. And a lot of people believe that, you know, being, you know, Pentecostal, and being, you know, or charismatic, or whatever you want to call it, I'm so sick of denominational lines and names. I just can't stand it. That you know, you're saying, "Oh, well, you can be holy in this in this flesh." No, that's not that's not what I'm saying. I know this flesh is not going. This flesh is not going to be holy. Yeah, it's, it, it, unless the Lord comes and calls us up, and we are changed in the moment, the twinkling of an eye, then this body is going to see <clears throat> the grave. It's going to see death. You know, if, 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 as soon as we're born, we're we're on the journey of death. Entropy has started, and we're seeing decay and death because of the original sin in the garden. wasn't meant to be that way, but that's what happened. But the Lord came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Verse seventeen it says, "And if you call on the Father who, without respect of persons," 
judges according to every man's work. Interesting. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. So he doesn't have respect persons. He loves each and every one of us the same way. People say, well, you know, well, God doesn't love me. He, you know, I'm, I'm down here. These other people up here. No. He loves, he, he loves all of his children the same. He, lo he loves, he loves the sinner, but not the sin. What is, what is it? I also said that in the Old Testament, he's, he's married to the backslider. Well, my pastor told me that you couldn't, you couldn't backslide on Lord. Uh, he, 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 he's either ignorant to the, that passage or some of the other passages in God's word or he's just, he's just saying outright lie <laughs> because you most you most certainly can backslide on God's will and what does it say jump out of his protective hand sure you, you'll get it all day long nothing can snatch you out of his hand so just go forth and just do what you want to do nothing can snatch you out of your hand out of, out of his hand but you can certainly jump out Remember talking about free will? He's not going to hold you against your will. Why do people think that? People people think, uh, that don't, I don't know if it's really, uh, if you call it a doctrine or not, but uh, a lot of people do talk about the uh, irresistible grace. I mean, no, that no matter what, no matter if you if you have cursed God, if you if you if you've done everything biblically, uh, what it says to reject God, even to the ones that says that there won't be any forgiveness whatsoever, and no matter what, you're going to heaven. If you prayed once when you were 10 years old, no matter what you do between 10 and 70, if just using this as a round, uh, round off a number, you get to 70, and then you pass on, no matter what, you are going to heaven. I'm pulling you to heaven. That's an irresistible grace that people talk about. It's not that way, people. You have to want to serve God. You have to want to walk in God's will. You have to, as it says here, pass the time of your sojourning, of, of your journey, your time here, here, here in fear. In fear. Would you not fear the loss of your salvation and eternal hell and then, uh, well, the lake of fire? Eventually, sure. Some people believe don't that they believe that's not possible. I can show you in God's word that it is. And it talks about our salvation, working it out, you know, with with you know, working our own salvation out with fear and trembling. See there again. There's that word again. So it's that we're to serve. God as he would have have us in the beauty of holiness as it talks about see a lot of the stuff people are, it's just a laziness doctrine well if I ask people to do more than this then it's going they're, they're, they're going to they're just going to shut down on me and not do anything and you know we're going to have we got to have their offering and you know we got to have this number on the board because I, I, I you know I'm going, I'm going to be embarrassed if my numbers uh, start falling down. They're gonna think it's me and you know the, my church, and I'm gonna be you know, I'm gonna be embarrassed in front of my peers and everything. I mean, people, people, come on! It's <laughs> it's not about you. It's about the Lord. Everything is about the we serve the Lord because of who He is and because of what He wants done through us. To talk to others, to witness to others, to preach and teach the gospel, to sing the gospel, to lift him up in praise and worship in the house of God. People think going to the house of God is antiquated and you don't need to do it anymore and everything. But it says in there, it says, you know, do it more so as you see the day approaching. Well, the day of the Lord approaching. If you're able. And God knows. God knows whether you whether you're able or you're not. You may you may fool everybody else and, and on many things, including including your salvation. You may say, "Oh yeah, I, I went to the altar." Yeah, 
Yeah, I do. And you still be lost in your sins. And you still join a church thinking you're okay. Or maybe you're just doing it because your spouse is doing it and, and you don't want to be, you don't want to fight every time uh, church time comes. So for, forget it. I'll just go with her. Or I'll go with him. And that way there won't be an argument. You know, I'll just got to sit there for an hour, maybe an hour and deal with it. And then I can come back home and I can get them, I can get my TV and get on my foot, watch my football games or do whatever. It's people. It's what they do. A lot of, uh, am I talking about anybody in particular? No, I don't. I, 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 never, I never point people out and bring out names or anything like that. Just because, I, for, for one reason, I, I, right now just saying that, I, I wouldn't have anybody in mind. I'm speaking all in generalized terms across the board of Christendom, <laughs> of everyone that's done that. You know, there's many... Uh, many different ways people can soothe their conscience and you know well you know if I go hey it, it, being sick or not being at for, for some reason not being able to go to God's house and uh, maybe not even it's something not even under your control maybe it's uh, uh, because of the weather snow oh and pray let's not have any harsh harsh winter weather this year uh because you can't get out and you know you they you know for you know, so that you know you talk to the pastor you know and talk they pass the word saying well you know it's best you know if we go ahead and cancel service because we don't want people trying to make it out and feel like they've got to make it to the to church because we're having it and end up in the wreck you know that that's showing wisdom uh but even with that it's like it makes me it makes me antsy. I'm like, oh man, you know, we should, we should have been able to, wish we've been able to get to God's house tonight, you know, and, uh, much less just uh, being even sick or or whatever and not going because you know I I'll just I'll just say this for me, I, I and sometimes like that even me, like I said, even being sick, there's a level of guilt not going, not just going on to God's house. A lot of people say, well, if you're sick, you're sick and everything. That's true, but still for me, I'm just using me as an example. And I'm not lifting me up or anything like that. I'm just using me as an example. Just me personally. It makes me feel bad. It makes me feel that tugging. That, oh, I should have I should have went, I should have went. Well, you know, if you've got, <laughs> if there's something that you may have that's pretty catching and stuff, uh, a, a virus of some type or something, it's probably good that you didn't go and uh, infect the entire congregation uh, but you still want to be there but you know what God sees that desire I'm not talking about just me I'm talking about you all out there as well God sees that desire whether or not that you want to be in his house that you want to serve him uh, hey power if power is on uh, able to get to the internet uh, something happens like that can't go to church and you're still at least able to sit down and you're not so sick that you just you're falling over and can't sit up uh do what we're doing right here do a video come on and do a video if nothing else come on and sing sing some songs in the old red back red back hymnal or something like that you know there's always something you can do for the lord use that time that you can't uh, for that time in prayer good to have a good long prayer time with the Lord you know everybody should have their own uh, prayer closet not just saying you know go in and have a rug laid down and you know and all that good stuff I'm talking about you know and, and, you know having a time there you know maybe maybe you, you do maybe you do, do even have a room that's set aside for uh, studying and reading and meditating on God's word and everything and I'm, I'm not using the word meditating in a new age sense okay uh, it's talking about studying God's word and thinking about it and praying about it reading it and comparing it and so on and so forth you guys know that I always want to try to try to say disclaimers because you know people out there will say that you say something and will stitch a few things together to make it sound like you're the most awful person in the world because of some things you said and they'll stitch all this other stuff together that you said and make it sound like you've you know <laughs> that you're something that 
you know, that you, that you said something you did. That's what I like to lose. Normally, a lot of times, say, you know, hey, disclaimer, this is what I meant, what I said. So, uh, uh, what else can you do, you know? People, people like the, the word of God getting out there. If they can it all, if they would it all, they'd shut down the internet, boom, right there. Or at least allow what they want out there. And they would shut the, what they would call, I guess, uh, the alternative media, the truthers, uh, people that's preaching God's word. Uh, they would shut each and every one of us down to where we couldn't do this. We couldn't put videos on YouTube or upload to the, the something. Uh, is, is that coming? Uh they, they say that it is. I'll say that. They'll say that the, the censorship of the internet has come because we've given up control of the internet. But, at any rate, God's still in control, okay? So, don't worry about it. Don't let, it, don't let any of that settle on your head. Carry on. Carry on to do God's work. Pass your time of sojourning here in fear. He mean walk in God's will and God's word. Do what he would have you to do. Look to him. Come to him. It says come to the, the throne of grace boldly. And you guys know what I talked about that before. How that means it's not to come there. Sit there and stick your chest out and be and said, I am so and so and I pray and demand that you do. No, nothing like that. It's not I mean, You guys know that. Now, if somebody can stitch something together, they'll probably stitch something together out of that saying that I said that. <laughs> no, you come before the Lord boldly, meaning that you know that the Lord's going to answer your prayer and that you have direct access to the Father. And boldly meaning that you call him Father directly. You don't have to, hey, we're not supposed to call anybody Father here on this earth. Only our Father in Heaven. Now we have an earthly father, of course. See, most people, call it, depending on where you're from, you know, dad, daddy, father, you know, whatever. Uh, and uh, you know, when I say people calling people father, uh, people automatically know most of uh, what I'm talking. <laughs> the the religion I'm talking about when I, when I mention that. Uh, but we're not calling anyone father here on this earth. In a way that we are to have a father in God the way he is a loving father that will hear and answer your prayer I said earlier it may not be I keep coming back to this and thought somebody out there may and it may not be right this second like I said <laughs> hey there's times that the Lord moves in a matter of seconds so what do you mean brother well you know in some accidents heard people give testimony said the only thing they managed to get out of their mouth was help us lord or help us lord jesus help us god and he does so in a case like that but you know that that's a little bit of a different situation than i want this and i want you to do whatever it takes for me to get this sometimes if you pray something like that, you will probably end up regretting that you that you prayed that prayer because the Lord's like, okay, you asked for it, here it is, and you can't handle whatever it is. <laughs> Told stories about people having vehicles that they tried everything in the world to get and uh, couldn't get it, and they just you know the Lord saying no, no, don't, no, you don't need it, you it, 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 you don't do it. Uh, no matter how you how many times you pray, I'm gonna say no. This is not right. You shouldn't do this. And then they ended up still doing it anyway. Ended up getting a piece of junk, <laughs> but they still had to pay for it. Still had to drive it and use it. Still had to pay for it, and it was just a piece of junk. I'm not going to get and give names out who did that, but that was always uh, actually that was a preacher that told that story several years ago, and I still find it kind of humorous to think about that uh, said it wouldn't even pull a, a trailer and a boat up a hill <laughs> it, was so, it was so weak that it can't really pull anything so uh, sometimes you, you pray and pray and finally God relents and says okay 
You asked for it, you got it. And yeah, you, you'll you get it. <laughs> and you regret it, but you you got to deal with it. And we got to know how to pray to God, what to pray for, who to pray for. You know, on your knees, or hey, hey some people I even lay flat on the ground. And I think, honestly, more of us should do that. You know, the whole, whole sackcloth and ashes type of thing, that'd be almost kind of the same, you know, to me, you know, laying with your face flat on the floor in humility before God. And that's all part, I believe, coming before the Lord boldly. It's coming knowing that he's going to answer your prayer, especially if you're not praying for just yourself. Or if you're praying just, just you know, just... I want this, I want that, I pray for me, I pray for that. No, pray for you. Remember what Job did. Been hitting on Job here quite a bit lately. Got to talking about the book of Job in our Sunday school class this past Sunday. Uh, still love it, still it's, it's one of, of course all, all, all of the Bible is, but it's still Job is one one of my favorite books in the Bible because it's it's so it's so relatable to our existence of what our life could be in some cases and some people's lives has uh, I, I can I could say nowhere near have I went through what brother Job went through no way no how have I went through what he went through and I tell you what I tell you one thing God's will be done but I'll tell you one thing I don't want to Lord found me work, or, or strong enough and knew that I would stand and could stand it and I would pray and hope my faith would stand during the times but you know something that's you talk about a trying of your faith and if you have not and I said before if you've not read the book which I recommend you read the whole Bible but I, I, if you've not read the book of Job read it read it read the entire book It'll take your time read it and think about it, meditate on it. It'll open up a lot of stuff in your mind and revealing who God is. <clears throat> Excuse me, especially Jehovah God, the God of the Old Testament, the, the one and true only God. So I highly recommend that. Very good book, you'll see. And then once you read it, Compare your life next to it and see where you stand. And see if there's anybody out there that can say to me, and maybe there might there might be even, say to me that, that yes, they went through exactly what Brother Job went through. And my faith stood, I stood, God blessed me, and he brought me through it. I'd say, well, praise the Lord. You must have extremely strong and awesome faith and I would love to be able to have the same amount and strong of faith that you have I would say that of Job to have the strength and the faith that he had sure he wept sure he had hardships everything come against him but you'll find that once you read it I'm not going to spoil it for you I want you to actually read it <laughs> pull your Bible down Dust it off. Read the book of Job. Because guess what? It points you like I said, toward the Lord and toward what's coming later on. They say they believe Job is one of the oldest books or is the oldest book that was uh, written. That, that's part of the our canon of scripture. But it does. It paints a picture especially the things to come and how bad things could be and how gracious our Lord is so yeah read it just read it we talk about it <laughs> I, mean, I still maybe we need to get back in maybe we need to go, go back and redo the, I, I think I did something on Job it's been a while back but you know maybe we need to spend take the extra time I, I tried to do it a, a condensed version of it 
but maybe we need to get into it and look at it more close and take our time and not be in a hurry and actually talk about it and think about it and put ourselves in Job's place and and see all the things that's going on compare it to our lives and everything we may do that in the good Lord's will we'll see what he we'll see we might do that good book Verse 18, we'll try to close here in just a minute. It says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. You know, they're going to eventually going to toss that out in the street as worthless. It says, From your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Not redeemed with any corruptible things. Not redeemed by what you've got in the bank or you've gotten stocks and bonds and so on and so forth and by your you know it doesn't show God's blessing you over anyone else because you've got a bigger house and more vehicles and all this and everything it may just be that you've put God off and that you've worked and worked and worked and worked and stuff has went your way and you've got all this and or you may just have incredibly good credit <laughs> and you and you, you're paying out the nose for this stuff just to appear like you know hey I've got all this stuff and you know I've, I've got I've got the world by the you know the the, the kite string you know some people are like that let me tell you something I've said it before and say it again <clears throat> when I used to do service plumbing I've been in some people's houses that one in particular don't even remember the name just know it was rich Hey, the entire time the man was yelling when he wasn't talking when he talked to us he was his voice was raised not in an angry way but you know you can tell that's just the way apparently that he just he that he talked but uh, let me tell you something so he talked to us and everything just briefly and uh, the rest of the time he was see he was screaming at people on, on the phone over business deals uh, screaming at his wife miserable miserable person it's like all oh, this is not worth all that and of course it was a big house mini room and you know just it's this the typical what you'd expect one of those where you know if your feet's got at least a little bit of mud on them no <laughs> leave you leave you leave your shoes at the door Take them off, leave them at the door. <laughs> if you got to go back out to the work van to get something, you know, hey, hey put, then you can put them back on. But leave them at the door. Don't drag it. No, this, is, you know, this, uh, that type of that type of house. You know, people with rooms that were just decorated because they wanted a room to decorate. Never first person has it has ever set foot in it and sit down or used it. It's just you know that type of deal. I'm not just knocking rich people. Hey, there are some rich people out there that that serve God, that give, that try to help the homeless and the people that are less fortunate. I'm not just knocking ever rich person, ever rich person like that. But I'll tell you one thing: that one that we worked for that day, he was. My goodness, wouldn't be that my. It's it's just like a person like it's a walking heart attack. <laughs> I, I'm not joking, you know. Yell and scream, talk, you better get this done, you know, and this deal's cost me, and you know, and then slams the phone down and then yells at the wife or something. You blank, blank, why don't you lie? You know, I, you know, yeah, I'm, I won't repeat a lot of what was said, but me and the other guy was just kind of like, it's like, let's hurry up and get this job done, let's get out of here. Embarrassing his wife to death. Sometimes she would, he would yell and scream at her and call or something. She'd just kind of look at us and kind of smile and lower her head. I was like, you poor thing. I mean, it takes two, but, you know. That, uh, at any rate, that's just that, that's just an example. When I'm talking about that, uh, the whole, what we talked about, we're not redeemed by any of that. Just because you got any of that doesn't mean you're any more blessed than the person that may just have $10 to, the, to their wallet. While you have maybe, uh, you, you may carry around, Several thousand dollars in your wallet that doesn't doesn't mean uh, that the, that person's any more blessed than the person that has 
five or ten dollars in their wallet. Lord has all kinds of people that he can use. That he does use. Some people have a lot. Some people don't have much. But, guess what? The greatest thing is, if you have salvation, if you've, if you've been saved, and you are born again, then you've got it all. Because from there, you're going to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Receive gifts from the Lord, gifts of the Spirit, as God's Word teaches. And you're, you're going to be blessed. Those are the blessings that we need to be seeking. Not the corruptible things as silver and gold, or as boats and cars and houses and this and that and everything. We don't look after those things, the corruptible, the corruptible things. Saying, well, if you had a lot of money, you'd, you'd, probably, you'd probably be acting different. Well, I don't know. Can't really give them a response for that because I don't know how I'd be. I would hope I would be, the same as I talked about some of these other people, still have a love for my fellow man and realize that they have needs as well. And if I'm fortunate, I need to give to the less fortunate. But most of all, not just in giving of stuff, but giving of what the Lord has given you. And I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about the spiritual wisdom and spiritual knowledge that he's given you to lead someone to the Lord. Because you're going to leave it all. People, you will leave it all. To that gentleman out there that was screaming to these people on the phone and screaming at his wife, if he's not dead by a heart attack by now, you're going to leave it all. You are going to, you will face judgment. As our pastor's famous saying, and it's so true, he says, it'll, he says it quite a bit, but he gets the point across. People say, I want to see Jesus. And he says, don't worry, you will see Jesus. Each one of us will. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. He is the King of kings, Lord of lords. Lord. Everybody is going to see Jesus. Only the pure in heart is going to see God. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Now there's a statement. God's word. You need to get in there and study it. There's a whole lot of stuff in there that you're missing. And I've said it before. And a lady and a, a sister in Christ Sunday morning mentioned the same thing I mentioned a lot too. That she uh, wanted her sins up, be sent up before she went. To, for forgiveness. She didn't want any sins trailing behind her to stand in judgment against her at that time. We want to stand before the Son of Man, the Son of God. The Lord Jesus want to stand before him and want to hear that enter in thou true and faithful servant. You definitely do not want to hear depart from me ye that work in equity for I never knew you could. That's it. You're lost. The, etern the, the eternal flames of the lake of fire will be eventually be your home if you hear that so you better make sure you better make sure of your salvation tonight this minute this very second because you're not guaranteed to live another minute or another second make sure of your salvation if the mess if this message could have any title and actually that actually may be the title Make sure of your salvation this instance while you still have a chance to. Say, if Lord, if I am lacking in any way, in anything, and I'm praying this and I'm asking this for myself too, if I'm lacking on anything, Lord, show me because I want to move up and I want to do what you want me to do. Amen. That's where we're going to close. That's what the Lord said. We appreciate the Lord for all he does, for his many blessings. Uh, we're still praying for a good year, 2017. You know, another full year. Who's, who knows what's going to happen? I guarantee one thing, though. Just like last year, zip by, I blinked, and all of a sudden it was 2017. Uh, I guarantee that it's going to be the same way with 
2017 we're going to bling and it's going to be at the end of that year as well so how many good things are you going to do for the lord this year while we still while we're still around while we're in this year the lord chooses to leave us here and not call us home we'll work for the lord gather in as much souls as we can for the kingdom while we still have a chance amen amen if you're not saved me invite you it'll be the best thing that you ever will it'll be the greatest decision above all other decisions that you will ever make in this life is accepting the lord jesus as your personal savior that he died for you that you ask forgiveness for your sins and ask the lord to save you come into your heart and take up a boat there and then you don't have to worry about death death has no more power over you so bro i might die I might die but guess what the eternal death will have no more power over you you're going to be able those that's going to say enter in now turn faithful servant you're saved hallelujah that's what i want to hear that's why i intend on hearing being you know lord's will and it is god's will that each one of us be saved don't believe in calvinism people are not just born to go directly to hell that's stupid this call <laughs> to call the spade to spade that belief is stupid people certain people were not just born to go directly to hell and some were born to go to heaven I'm not even going to dignify that or <laughs> get into that. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that. I'm not going to get into it now. But at any rate, God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you as always. And uh, uh, your spiritual warriors, continue to pray. I always pray. Hey, I, let's just send it out. Let's always pray. Your spiritual warfare people, always pray against the powers of the enemy. Always take no break. Not just on these days, ritualist days. Every single time that you kneel down, you pray against them along with your other prayers. Amen. Amen. That way, I'll have to keep remembering to say it and you'll know to do it from here on out. But no, do that. And, uh, you know, have a, uh, if we don't, let's see, well, tomorrow's mid Wednesday. Uh, i got our midweek service. Uh, may or may not be able to do a video tomorrow. If not, we'll definitely try to. Uh, Hopefully, maybe might be able to get one Thursday. If not, uh, you know, as soon as we can get back home and do another one, we will. Uh, be in the Lord's will, of course. Because, you know, we want Him to control and guide and direct each and every aspect of our lives. Because He can do it the right way. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless each and every one of you. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye.